This is a short tutorial about light baking in Unity. Now, before we proceed, I should say that I'm not the greatest expert on these matches, but still, I hope that this will help you getting started. So I have created a new Unity project and I perform a few setups that are useful for uh, better graphics. So build settings, player settings, we select the color space linear. We deselect auto graphics for Windows and delete direct 3D9. That is useful if later we want to use post processing, such as uh, the one that comes with lighting box. Close that window and in edit project settings graphics. I will uncheck all the defaults and set the rendering path to deferred. So now that this is done, I can import a model. I use uh, one that was created by Ram Rankumar, a student at the Department of Interior Architecture at RISD. So I drag it into my assets folder, this FBX file. And um, the first thing we want to do is to see if we get uh, a model. So this one has no textures, but that's useful for our purposes because it's just about lights. As we have selected the model uh, in our assets folder, we have to perform a few things with the import settings. So open inspector have the model selected and uh, I would say uh, it's irrelevant for lighting only but uh, for some effects like sun shafts uh, it's good to generate colliders and definitely generate light map UVs. If you do not do that uh, global illumination cannot be calculated properly. So once you have selected that, you hit apply. And there's some processing going on. So the colliders are created and the light map UVs, so these are coordinates for the global illumination, are also created. Takes a little moment uh, for this to process. And when it's done, we can drag our imported geometry into the scene. So do that now. And what we can observe with Unity's default lighting is that we have very little detail here in the shadowy areas, meaning uh, indirect light is almost absent. And um, that is what we want to correct. So just to make sure, by default, the directional light is set to directional in real time. We can leave that as it is. But if we want to create indirect lighting for an object or geometry we have imported, then uh, we have to select the object and set it to static. I'm not doing that right away, but this is just important to remember. I'm doing it in a bit. Before I do it, I open the lighting window. So if you do not have that, you can go to window and here you find lighting and settings and then you can drag it into a place in your interface, wherever you prefer. So as this is done in lighting, I will uncheck real time global illumination. I will leave baked global illumination checked. I will change the lighting mode to baked indirect. I will change the light mapper to progressive. And as this is an outdoor scene, I can change the light map resolution to 10. And if you have a smaller scene, uh, say an interior, um, then you want to have more precise global illumination, you can uh, increase the light map resolution 
directional mode I will set to non-directional. And these are basically the settings we have to perform. So now, if we go into our scene view and uh, select the object, you can also do it in the hierarchy, you can set uh, the object to static. Just before I do that, ah, sorry, check off auto generate in lighting. Uh, and then you can set the object to static. The reason is that Unity will uh, otherwise immediately begin some calculations and you may not want that. You may want that to do that uh, when you're ready. So here I uh, have a model with a little bit of geometrical hierarchy, so I change the children. Meaning all objects that are here in this hierarchy are also set to static. So I save my scene. Just one. And um, in the scene view, we can also change the way uh, the geometry is presented. So, for instance, if we check baked light map, we get a grid of checker boxes. So, what you want to see is an even grid like here, with uh, square checker boxes. If that's not the case, you may have forgotten to create light map UVs or the modeling program in which you created the geometry uh, created messy light maps uh, UVs. So in SketchUp you can, uh, for instance, correct that uh, with a tool that's called PlayUp. Uh, this model was created in Max and it's usually working quite well in that regard. So I go back to Shaded View and now I can finally bake the light. So I'm still looking at this shadowy area of uh, that building model. And now let's see what happens if I create lighting. So a calculation process is happening and we see that um, we also get a preview. Um, while this calculation is being performed, we can actually navigate in our model, uh, have a look around, look at different areas, how they are being calculated. You hear a little bit of noise, that's the fan of my laptop spinning up. But we can already see that we have suddenly way more uh, geometrical detail and light detail in the shadowy areas of our model. So in the lower right we see that the baking is almost complete and if we compare that to the previous version uh, we see that suddenly we have pretty good global illumination. So if you're not happy with uh, the result, we can always increase the light map resolution here. If you do that, let's um, do it for testing. So go to the baked light map. Uh, we see that the global illumination is now also shown. And say if I change the light map resolution to 20, we will see that this pattern gets a lot finer. And that means a more precise, albeit uh, uh, more time-consuming calculation. So now, with our directional light still set to real-time, we can rotate it and we still get uh, this effect of global illumination. So the shadows are created in real time, but the global illumination was baked. I hope that helps you uh, with your project. And that's it.